and attentive you should be because the next speaker is phenomenal. Uh, I, I look at him kind of like uh, the Gandalf of communication, but much younger and much more handsome. He was one of the youngest agency CEOs, and he aced it. And then uh, Sebastian from Klarna called him and said, why don't you come and, and run marketing for us because we're going to take it over the world. And then he said, well, uh, and you're also going to become a consumer brand, um, and I'm going to make that happen. So please give it up for David Sandström, Simo Klarna. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, <laughs> I, I just have to comment on this. This is, by the way, what happens when, when I tell my designers that I'm going to be on stage with a lot of talented people. You have to make me look good. And they said, we're going to make you look even better. We're going to make you look like a superhero. Uh, so, so this is not how I view myself, just to be, to be completely honest. My, uh, my name is David. Um, I have a history of working at uh, or running one of the biggest advertising agencies, DDB in the Nordics. Did that for five years, and I had the opportunity to work with some of the biggest brands in, in the Nordic regions, at least, like McDonald's, Samsung, Telia, Svenska Spel, Vattenfall, a lot of those. Um, but uh, about one and a half years ago, I, I decided to, uh, to leave DDB and um, do something, what I feel now is completely different. I decided to join the um, client side. Um, and the reason for that is that I, I think now, in hindsight at least, I'm, I'm the kind of person who wants to be what, uh, what we in Swedish would call het luften, the hot air, where, where the magic happens, is, is where I as a person want to be. And looking at Klarna, from my perspective at least, this is really where we're at. Sorry, for you who don't know Klarna, we're like a payments company that's simplifying payments, financials, shopping and everything around that. Um, but, but for me, Klarna was really, really interesting to, to get to know and to get a hold of because it is really at the intersection of some really big shifts that we're seeing. So, so as we all know, money is probably going to change tremendously in the next couple of years. Money, banks, as we know it, they're not really going to exist and work in the way that we know now. I don't know where it's going, I just know that it's going to change completely. Data is probably what time is all about, like what is going to happen with all the data, how we're going to process this, how we're going to use it to make smarter decisions, everything around that. We at Klarna probably have, at least in the Nordics, probably in Europe, uh, the biggest data stack when it comes to transactions of all companies, down to SKU level. So that's highly interesting to me as well. And as we all know, retail is going to change a lot as well. Like what is going to happen to retail? Is the death of retail here? Is e-commerce taking over? Yada, yada. All of these big questions. And Klarna is really well positioned when it comes to all of these. So when I took on the challenge, this was really the reason behind it. But like <laughs> in the words of a modern Shakespeare, y you could say that there is something that's rotten with the financial industry. Right? I've never been to a dinner so far, a dinner party so far, where I say, hey, I work at Klarna, I work at a bank, I work uh, in the financial sector, and people were like, wow, that's fantastic, I'm going to tell you these awesome ex user experience stories of my bank. Like, the only thing I keep hearing is, yeah, well, well, my bank lives on another planet, and they treat me like shit, and so there's something that's really rotten in this industry. Like, let's be honest, this is not like saying you work at Spotify or Netflix or Uber or whatever. So something's really rotten, and obviously the, um, the data around my industry shows that. Uh, we've seen uh, some data from the Edelman Trust Barometer before, and, and please don't get stuck up with the ugly slides. These are just like placeholders for you to, to get a hold of the narrative, but all in all, regardless of if you look at like the Edelman Trust Barometer, if you look at what Facebook is releasing, if you look at all of the different like trust and liking um, uh, reports that come out, the financial services industry, they managed to hold a bottom position in almost all of the reports that are released. And, and that's obviously, <laughs> for me, kind of sad, but also a, a um, challenge. But what pisses me off the most is obviously that we know the antidote to this. Like, we know how to change it. It's not like we see this and say, what? Can this really be true? This is not the first time. And, and there are a couple of, again, placeholder, there are a couple of people who've really dedicated their lives 
to understand like how to build trust, how to build company liking, how to build brand liking. They've done this over so many years. Like this is almost as old as me, the study that is going on. 48 countries, so many different industries, so many different respondents. And they obviously come down to one big truth. And my industry knows it, your industry should know it. And that is that the brand person relationship or the company person relationship is the biggest driving factor to whether you like something or not. Does the company understand me? Do they know who I am? Do they talk to me on an intuitive level where I want them to be? Or are they completely distant from me? So everyone in my industry knows this. So you would think that, wow, they're working on it. Now the big change is coming. Everyone knows, everyone in the financial industry knows how to create this brand or company person relationship. But looking at how the industry works, and this is a snapshot of quite recently, is that they don't seem to give a shit about that, right? Every financial institution is blue. Every financial institution is male. Every financial institution has men in suits and ties, shaking hands and stock photo pictures. Every financial in institution has built a barrier between them and you and where you come with your hat in your hand and ask for money or advice or whatever. And every one of these are snatching money of you. Like that, that is the, the basic essence of it. So this is a bit of the background of why I joined Klarna, because I, I love big challenges. I love the fact that we're a Swedish unicorn trying to take over the world. Um, I love the fact that I can be in Stockholm with my family, but actually work globally because we're getting good traction there. So looking at this picture, this really summarizes the challenge that I've taken on. Um, and in very short, I've set out to change this. So I thought I'd spend about 10 minutes to just explain to you what I've done, my thinking behind it, and if I got time, I'll share some, some secret sauce recipes for you. But everything for me started out with the data. We've seen it before, here's another placeholder, but, but, but just to guide you through my strategic thinking, it isn't very smart, it's very basic, my strategic thinking. We asked a bunch of people, like a bunch of people globally, and did one of the biggest surveys around how do you feel about financial institutions, what is important to you, yada yada, and we find out, uh, found out that there are true needs and there are untrue needs, unspoken needs. And in short, people say they want something that's secure, safe and simple, that's really important to them. And what they don't say, what we see in our loads of transactional data, the most driving factor for financial institutions is status. You don't say it, maybe you don't know it, but deep down inside we can mine that through all of your data. So knowing that, the, like, it's not rocket science, the quite obvious strategy, if people want things that are secure, simple and easy, and status is the biggest driving factor of it, looking back 20 years with the Amex Black, this is the only thing I'm aiming for in everything that we do. Let's become the equivalence of premium convenience. Like that's the basic of what we at Klarna do. Mining the data, looking at the true needs of people. Like no, don't mine the data in order to provide them with better advertising or more targeted like price points or whatever. Mine the data in order to understand what you really need to become. And this is what we want to become because it's so true to the data. And that is where we come up with our like, our core, our what was talked about before, our golf ball that Tiger would, I don't even know golf, I'm not trying, I know what I'm trying to do, but the golf ball at least. This is our golf ball, smooth. Like one word that summarizes every complex detail around our industry, and it's brutally complex what we're trying to do. We nail it down to one word that encompasses both the simplicity, the ease, the smoothness of what we're trying to do, but also with a very premium surrounding around that. I'll just show you in short what we're trying to do. Can I? Can I click?
Klarna. She's... Smooth payments. Okay, sir. So what we did was actually to just challenge the notion of what a bank and what a financial institution is. Many of, the <laughs> many of my co-workers often ask themselves like, what would happen if Louis Vuitton started a bank? And that is somewhat of the baseline of what we're trying to think, obviously not that high end. But we change, we try to, um, <laughs> we try to say no to yes is one of the big posters that we have. Would a bank do this? Yes. Then say no to it. Like that's the simple thing that guides us in many, many things that we do. So like when we take photos of our CEO or when we do new cards, we turn them not upside down, but on, on the edge. We do a lot of things in social. The way we, we interact with our consumers is just something completely different if you compare to, for example, Handelsbanken. Um, and again, like one of the important factors for, the, for us, something that no one has actually done before, is to team up with some of the world's big, uh, best designers and visual people in order to create a world that has never been seen before in the financial industry. And again, the reason why we're doing that has already been mentioned today, and it's the most obvious thing within marketing, but no one does it. And that is this. Like what you guys want to say and what people want to hear, the intersection of that is just, I, I should have made it smaller, right? Or like I should have made just a pixel or two there. There's just so much shitty content, so much product marketing, so much stuff out there that no one wants to see. And this is like the basic thing of marketing out there and no one does it. That's why we use design, we use influencers, we use all the different things in our portfolio in order to actually achieve this. Um, and it's getting traction, right? If this is not a lot for you guys, but like 15, 16 million views for our advertising, it's huge in our industry. Like PayPal, when they do global stuff, they're on like 100,000, 200,000 maybe, because people just don't care. So creating stuff that people care about and it's getting traction is really at the heart of what we do. I'll show some more stuff, I'll just go on. Are you click, can you click? <laughs> So like small things from our Singles Day campaign where we had 30% off worldwide on all the six toys. We ran it in Sweden, Germany, and in the UK. Just things that a normal institution wouldn't do, but that actually catch on. So very short on our secret sauce. I'm going to run through this. Um, I have three things that I've learned throughout this journey. The first thing that I told you, like that I tried to showcase, I do think pop culture is highly important to all of the brands. Like getting talk value, we are in the attention economy. Um, being part of pop culture, some people call it social, some call it content, we call it pop culture. Being at the dinner table conversation is something that we're aiming for in every sense. And we live in a world where politics, entertainment, brands, they aren't separate entities anymore. They're so intertwined in everything that we do. And one thing that we've done in the last year is actually have fame as a KPI. I know many have conversions and attribution and every of those kind of metrics in what they do. What we do have at Klarna is fame. We want to be mentioned. Like the biggest thing for us would be if Jay-Z raps about Klarna in one of his sentences. Like that is, the, that, like that is when, I, when, when I throw in the towel. The second part is designed for the long run. I know that Syme and many of the speakers here are all about like optimization, growth hacking, all that kind of stuff. I really do think that there's a huge opportunity for us here um, today, for brands, to design for the long run. And I am of the firm belief that you can't optimize into a brand. You have to do something else. And you can see that with the world's biggest brands. What they do, they don't optimize for this. They own a feeling. The feeling of being hungry. The feeling of achieving everything. The feeling of community. And that is what we're doing as well. So when everyone else in this room at the moment runs after data, runs after optimization, runs after the numbers, I do think that there's something when it comes to running after the long run. Optimizing for that. When others zig, zag. The last part, 
very short. Um, this is what I spend most of my time on, organizational theory. It, it sounds freaking boring, it sometimes is, but organizing for creativity is on the top of my priority list. We've taken so much inspiration from the most creative times of all times, the Renaissance, where they put all of these different creatives into Italy, the Medici family bought in Chinese uh, artists, Italian artists, Spain, Spanish artists, and they created the most influential and creative uh, times of all time. That is what we try to do at Klarna. We don't have marketing teams or sales teams or product teams. We mush everything together. Second part is a quote from Jeff Bezos set up to organize that you can do as many experiments per unit as possible. Um, that is what we try to do. We don't have one or two big strategies. We have 400 multi-bit strategies that we're going after. We'll skip that. The last one, and then I'm gonna leave it to you, Ola. Um, this is really important. Life is fucking hard. Like, that's just the fact of it. Life is really, really hard. And the difference between success and failure is often perseverance. Like, can you go through hard times? Can you run through complex problems? Can you do things that are really, really hard? We almost only hire for passion, because passion is the antidote of that. Being able to persevere is aligned with passion. So when people join, our passion interviews are three times. We only let people work with things that they're really passionate about, because that's the thing that's going to drive them. Sorry for being a bit over. Break into pop culture, designed for the long run, organized for creativity. Life's hard. And I'm a superhero. Wonderful. Sorry. Give me a high. <laughs>